I hope you've already made the original shirt. Now, if you want to make it with this very simple neckline and maybe iron something on, keep it all very simple, overlock every seam. I've done this video for you so that you get a quick run through of how to do that. There's really nothing uh, spectacular about it. I didn't really need to do a video, but I thought, why not? Let's get started. Let me show you how it's done. So now we're going to have a quick look at what I've cut out here already. I've got my hem trim and I'm doing it in the same color as the back. So I've got the front and back hem trim. I've got my sleeves. I cut these out as if I was going to make it with a closure, but I've decided to make this one without a closure because I think that'd be quite nice. And so if you change your mind at a uh, this stage, what you can do is then simply grab your scissor, hang on, where is it? Here it is, and just trim off the closure. There we go, that's fine. So now I've got my two sleeves which are the same. And on the front, I also need to trim the closure off. At this point, it's important then to mark which is the front and which is the back because they're gonna look really, really similar, right? So place these on top of each other minute like that and I'll just trim it off alternatively you could cut it out like I say in my introduction you just use the uh, center front line to do that and I'm just gonna like cut this off here and then I'm gonna mark this center front here anyway and I'm gonna mark one snip in there so I know this is my front leaves so the first thing to do here as ever is to put the sleeves on and what I'm going to do is take my front piece first and then I'm going to take my sleeve and find my front sleeve here, one front sleeve on one side and one on the other and I'm just going to sew this on and this time I'm just going to do this on my overlocker. So that we're doing this really really quickly it's always good to see something different. great now I can take it and do the other side so take my other sleeve front and uh, my sleeve on top of each other and over to my overlocker edges on top of each other So I've done that now, fantastic. It's really good actually, it's not so bad because I'm gonna top stitch it as well in a minute. So um, now I can put my back on and I'm just gonna take that and place it on top of the, my well, back and back sleeve on top of each other. Overlock it, drink. Do the same on the other side. So fast then this sweatshirt goes together in like 20 minutes. Over to my sewing machine here and I'm just going to top stitch the seams towards the front. When you're top stitching make sure your top stitch is really long. There we are. My machine has got something really special. It's like this extra support at the back which moves with the machine and makes it so that it transports beautifully. This is actually not as brilliant as I thought it would be in the transport department here because I have overlocked um, and sewn this on the overlocker together. Because this is so thick, it's slightly, you know, funny. It's not quite as nice. But um, for a quick one, I think that's brilliant. I'm just going to carry on here and um, now sew the other one on and do the same thing all the way around. Can you hear the racket in the background? 
background. I mean, this is a very safe neighborhood I live in. Okay, so that's the top already finished. So now I'm going to sew this together as per usual. I'm going to sew together the sides and I can just do this like as I said. I'm going to do it all over lockdown. <laughs> I am doing it all over lockdown. I'm sure. I like it. So. But sure is fast. That's that's one thing. Right, and the other side. Right, now I'm quickly going to do the cuffs. Um, I am going to do the cuffs on the sewing machine. No overlocking here, simply because um, I want them apart so I can get them on better. Let's get the stitch length back down. And now can you see the difference in transport? It's just like brilliant. Next one under, close them. There we go. And next step would be to iron it. But of course, I'm just going to be like a little cheat here today. This is the super, super fast version of whatever. <laughs> so now I can just stick this little cuff into my arm. There we are. And I can just overlock all of this together, but I really don't want <laughs> to over on my sewing machine here, get it under and I'm just stretching it to fit. No quartering, no nothing. This is say a really fast piece of work and there we are make sure that these all line up excellent so I've got my cuff on Ta -da. so now I just have to overlock it can top stitch it from the other side so let's just go in here and top stitch it awesome actually I don't think I necessarily want to top stitch it I think it's nice I leave it sleeves are done so now I can do my um, band on the bottom and we have got front and back of these so I just need to take a front piece and a back piece and I sew them together on the edge here so I'm going to iron these apart real quick and what I'm going to do different here to the uh, one that I'm showing you in the course where we're going to like um, sew the top edge on separately we're going to do it in one go and then we're going to overlock it so the first thing though is the same as as ever I'm going to take my little high low hem here and I'm going to put it inside each other so yeah, there <laughs> there we go and we're going to close it along the lower edge now that's exactly the same as it is um, in my instructions and if you want to do it like like a pro like really fast you just take the side seams you place those on top of each other and then your left hand does the middle you hold it like that and then you grab it and then you keep going all the way around that's that's how we do it the pros that don't use pins and then I can um, press that edge or alternatively why don't we do something different and we understitch it so that it's way easier to do 
Um, but what understitching is, it means that you get a really nice firm edge. It works really well, you could use that on anything. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the seam allowance and push it one way, and then we're going to stitch on it, right? And that will give us the edge. And also, you don't have to have any, you know, hassle ironing it. It's much, much easier to iron then. So seam allowance is facing that way now and I'm stitching on top of it. And actually a stitch length can be even bigger. Force it apart, top stitch. And you will see it's a magic. <laughs> um. right. There we go, all done. And what we get now is a really firm edge which we can just tuck under it is so so simple i'm just going to get my ironing board back and quickly give this a little press i've done this now um i'm going to turn it the only thing that is um a little bit tricky when you do under stitching is that the side that you've um, understitched is going to be slightly shorter than the one that isn't. So that will need trimming or you just have to be careful. Um, it's actually quite a bit. Yeah. So what you can do is in this case, I'm going to do this just to show you what, you know, if you are a beginner and this is really thick and I can't see what I'm doing anymore, you're just going to stitch that down where it wants to go really nice and flat pop these seams on top of each other so and you can see how it's like in some areas it's like loads and then over here it's like very little so this is brilliant because now i can just trim it if i want to because in some bits it really is like too much and i'm just going to trim it off so I don't end up, you know, in trouble. So, and now we can put this trim onto the lower end of our sweatshirt. And like the cuffs, we do the same method. Make sure though that you put the front into the front. So that's my front. I can tell because it's lower. And so now I'm just gonna push this in here. It's going to be really thick actually. Right, stitch length back down. Sew this in, no pin. This is the sewing where you're not allowed any pins. <laughs> you want to learn how to do things without pins too. Sometimes you need pins, but not all the time. When you're making a little sweatshirt while your kid all naps, um, Sometimes it's nice just to be able to go, right? Excellent. Now I'm going to overlock this. It's so thick. So now I'm going to top stitch from the top. Hence the name top stitching big stitch length it should grab a lot better now because I have the stitch length on four um, and I'm just gonna go um, you don't want to be too far over towards the seam you want to have a really nice the white not because it's fantastic but because it's I really just want to show you this and I didn't have anything else so um, I'm just gonna sew it together there. one centimeter seam allowance Oop. stitch was a bit big there we are and then I can put my neck band in I would always recommend that you iron your neck band before you start i think that's a really important thing 
So I'm going to grab my iron and iron it lengthways in half. My neck band, so it goes on easier. Would have been even easier if I did that first. <laughs> so now I'm going to put this on and I can uh, put my seam anywhere really where I really don't want it to be is like in the front. So I'm just going to do the box standard one where I put my front on here and my back on and this time I actually do need to pin um, this thing and I'm just going to put a pin vertical to the seam in there and then I'm going to do another one at the back. Then I can half it again if I wanted to. People say that they quarter it. I don't really normally do that very much. And then you can see how I have to stretch it to get it on there, which will then look really good. But when you put it on, it feels like, oh my God, there's so much there, right? But it isn't really. Another thing to do for this is what you could do is stretch the edge before you um, put it in and that will make the sewing in a little bit easier. Right, so we're going back to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this in. It's easier when you stitch it from the other side so it's important to turn it inside out like that. It makes it way way easier because you can stretch it too really simply. Right, so one centimeter seam allowance and oh, it doesn't feel much now that I'm stretching this. Not much at all. Da, 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 da. Excellent stuff. Now, one thing is really important when you do this kind of thing is take out your pins. <laughs> there we go. Oh, this is going to be really cool. Like it. So make sure no pins in there. So now I want to top stitch this so I can just leave it the way it is. I don't even need to turn this anymore. So just make sure that I don't start on the front because we don't want that. Make sure your seam um, stitch length is really long. I'm having it on three and a half now. Oh. <laughs> there goes my sign. I can turn it and I can have a look if I did it right and then we're going to put on oh look it's so cute <laughs> I like it it's really is a big neckline so you don't need to worry about um, you know not getting the head show that's absolutely fine I like these like that sweatshirts because that means you can get like a turtleneck underneath it and stuff so I think that's really really lovely that is Right, so now I'm at this stage where I can iron on my little lady here. And she's got a lot of background still on it. So when you buy these, they usually tend to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim around it a little bit because I think it's way too much. I don't know what you're thinking, but yeah. <laughs> I bet you agree that actually it needs trimming a little bit. I'm leaving a little bit standing just so I don't cut into it. I think that's probably why they leave it. They cut it out by machine obviously by the thousands and if the machine has got any calibration issues um, a millimeter off you would actually cut into the design have to throw it all out and I think that's why there is a bigger gap left. And now I'm just going to bravely put my iron on it but I'm just really worried about all this stuff. So, and I can't find my ironing cloth, so I'm not quite sure. I think I might put a little scarf over the top here, just, 
just you know just to make sure um, it looks like a silk scarf it feels like a silk scarf <laughs> so I hope it is a silk scarf let's see what happens oh yeah that's on oh that's really cool I love it oh yay that works really well or I could top stitch around it as well in black I think just to make sure it doesn't come off afterwards I think I do that oh I think that's beautiful I love it how it's like a little bit lower and it goes into um, the little you know the little high low effect hem now I need to just get uh, some black thread and I'm going to top stitch all the way around the edge. This is for Victoria actually this top and that's my friend's daughter um, and her bigger daughter has always been modeling everything for me. She's really really cute, very beautiful girl inside and out. So this is for her sister. Um, so let's see how I get round. When you um, top stitch something down, what you want to do is put your needle down and then turn around. Here it's fairly easy because the thread is so bobbly on this anyway that it doesn't really matter too much. Needle down when you turn always and then going up here just on the black. Now it's super, super easy actually because it's already ironed on. so. You know, it shouldn't really come off in a wash either, but I just want to be sure, so I thought, nah, let's just go around, right? Up this way. This is really nice. That was a really quick job. Even having the camera on the entire time and filming it, which usually takes a lot longer than when I just do it and I don't worry about, is it all in? Can you see it well? <laughs> so... Oh, this is gorgeous. Just love this. 